Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning back in. Today I want to get back into our series of five things that you need to know about the forage species of bass. We did uh, crayfish a little while ago. Today I want to talk about bluegill. Bluegill are such a huge factor in the location of bass and can be the primary forage of all bass species in a lot of lakes. Um, they really come into play and you can learn a lot about bass based on the bluegill. I've often said that, you know, if you know, if you found bluegill, you found bass. You just got to figure out how to catch the bass that are in that area. And I firmly believe that. So today I want to talk about five things that you need to know about bluegill that will help you catch more bass. So the number one thing, guys, and this is important to recognize and I can't tell you how many times I have seen this in, you know, in clear water where I know that this happens. And this is, if you're going down an area and you're consistently getting bluegill bites. So let's say you're throwing a weightless wacky rig, uh, Berkeley General or whatever stickworm you like to throw, a Senko or whatever it is. A lot of times you can go down, say, a row of docks and you, you throw it up under the dock and you get a bluegill bite, tap, 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 tap. And there's like schools of bluegill that will come and bite your bait. And you, you know, you fish the dock, you don't catch anything. You go to the next dock, tap, 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 tap. Bluegill's just dominating the bait. You go to the third dock, tap, tap, tap. Bluegill's all over the place. Go to the fourth, fourth dock, throw it under there. You get no bluegills and you catch a bass. And I... You know, in clear water, you can actually watch what happens. You can see that the docks that don't have bass, the bluegill feel very comfortable in terms of being aggressive towards your bait. When there's a bass under a dock, you will not get nearly the number of bluegill bites. In fact, frequently, you won't get any bluegill activity because the bluegill know that if they go after your bait, they become an easy target for the bass. So the bluegill will stay, will just be inactive. They'll stay wherever they're at and they have their eye on the bass and don't really care that much about your bait. So if you're going down a row of docks or you know whatever shoreline you're fishing and you're getting bluegill taps consistently and then all of a sudden they stop and you don't catch a bass, make a few extra casts in that area because normally what that means is there is a larger predator fish in that area that's making the bluegill uncomfortable and you know you make those few extra casts you'll be rewarded with an additional couple bass that day um, it's unbelievable to me how frequently that this actually happens and in the lakes up north where the water is super clear you know a lot of times you can see the bass sitting under the dock and the bluegill won't come bite your bait and then you go to the next dock and the bluegill it's like choo, 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 they come out of everywhere but if there's a bass around they're not coming out to eat your bait. So just keep that in mind. So that's the number one thing. The second thing has to do with the bluegill spawn. The bluegill will start spawning pretty much once the bass have finished their spawn. At that point, you know, you're talking the, the early part of summer months. The bluegill will continue to spawn all the way through summer into early fall. So knowing that and knowing where the bluegill spawn they become easy targets for bass. Uh, the bass will frequently hang out around the bluegill nests, which you know a lot of times look like honeycombs. You'll have 20 bluegills all right next to each other, and they do that for safety reasons. It, you know, it's that safety in numbers feeling. But you'll get bass that will hang out around those bluegill beds. Um, so if you know where the bluegill are spawning, you that gives you an idea as to know where the bass are going to be at. Uh, you know, and you can catch them at that point. They become easy targets. So that's the second thing. The third thing is you need to pay attention to what bluegill are doing uh, in large grass mats. If you, so what I mean by that is if you go into a grass mat and you hear bluegill popping, you know, where you hear them like sucking bugs off the bottom of weeds or off the bottom of lily pads, that means two things. It means one, the bluegill are active, which means the bass are probably going to be active. And that's, you know, that's, keep in mind, guys, 
Largemouth and bluegill are the same family, scientific family. They're all in the sunfish family. So there's a really good relationship between what bluegill are doing and what bass are doing. And if you go into a weed bed and you hear them sucking bugs off the bottoms of grass or lily pads and just making popping sounds, that means the activity level is high, which means the bass activity level is probably high as well. It also means that there are bluegill in that area, which means there are bass in that area. So it's a good thing to fish. So for me, if I'm fishing large grass mats or large pad fields, I wanna hear those bluegill popping on the pads to give me more confidence that there are going to be bass in that area to, to catch. So that takes me to my fourth thing. If I'm not seeing bluegill, and I know I'm on a lake where bluegill pay, play a really large factor in, in the bass forage uh, base, then I'm not gonna spend much time in that area if there's no bluegill. You need to recognize that there is a really good relationship there. And if you're on a lake that has a good bluegill population, but you're not seeing bluegill, there's probably not any bass around either. So keep that in mind. So that was the fourth thing. The last thing has to do with wintering bluegill. In natural lakes specifically, when you're talking about you know deep, deeper, clear natural lakes, you can locate wintering bass by identifying where the, the bluegill are. And it's pretty easy to do. Once the water temperature gets cold, and you're talking about, you know, up here in the North Country, I'm talking, you know, for about the few weeks before ice up. So we're talking like 50 degree range, low 50s, and cooling water temperature. The bluegill will move deeper, but they will get super tight and compacted. And they'll get into these groups that when you go over them with your electronics, they look like Christmas trees. It'll be wide at the bottom, and it'll rise off the, off, the, off the bottom into a cone shape. So if you're graphing what I call Christmas trees, those are groups of wintering bluegill. The key with that is the bass hang out with those wintering bluegill because that's their forage all winter long. So if you can find those Christmas trees of, of wintering bluegill, you'll find bass that are there with them and it becomes much easier to locate the bass and catch them because of that. So guys, that was five tips or five things that you need to know about bluegill that will help you catch more bass. It's really important to understand the forage to locate where the bass are gonna be. I hope this was helpful. If it was, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share it on your social media pages. Stay tuned, new tips and tricks coming out every day.